Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. Alpha 322 brings with it some very interesting new features, so today I would like to break down my favourite. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much for the support. It is truly appreciated, in particular to Jumbo for rejoining. Thank you, sir. And to Iceny Magni, thank you so much for supporting the channel. So Alpha 322 has been out for a little over a week now on the live servers, and I have been jumping in as much as possible. So today I would like to share with you what I consider to be the best features of Alpha 322. And let us start with my absolute favorite feature being the new settlements, which according to the patch notes, there are 15 new locations which offer points of interest for missions as well as shopping. Now, many of these new settlements are practically villages in size, but they all range in scale and offer something unique from one to the other, even though they are all using the same designs from the same asset library. Now, I have managed to visit around six or seven of them on Microtech and about four of them on Hurston, so there are still apparently five of them that I am yet to even see, but interestingly, some are accessible via the star map, allowing players to jump directly to them, while others require missions to reveal their locations. Now, what I love the most about these new locations, aside from the fact that I would love to literally live out my days in the Persistent Universe at a place like Astor's Clearing, is what it means for where Star Citizen is heading. Firstly, these locations are all using the same assets, so just one style or aesthetic being the derelict settlement style, giving the impression that the inhabitants built these locations from old wrecks and salvaged parts. But as Cloud Imperium build up more styles of architecture and then integrate those styles into the Rastar tool, which is the tool that they use to quickly place these locations on the planets, we will start to see many, many more villages, towns, and settlements of varying designs popping up over time, which will add greatly to the points of interest that we have and also give more of a sense of a population living on these worlds as the Stanton system was settled about 200 years ago. So there has been a lot of people coming and living there. But secondly, these places will have full NPC populations going about their business, offering jobs, missions, and trades for players, while also being hooked up into the mission system and playing their own part in the overall dynamic economy, even if it is just a small part. Now, seeing locations like this pop up allows my imagination to think of the possibility of one day living out my life on planets and in locations like this, just carving out my own existence, watching players and NPCs coming and going about their business. And I really look forward to checking them out a lot more over the holidays, as I feel there is so much more to see there than I have had time to check out. But when NPCs are more capable, having a day-night cycle and just seeing them go about their day-to-day, -day, living amongst them, is going to be pretty special. Now, the next feature that I am thoroughly enjoying in 322 is structural salvage. Now, I know that this is not the full mechanic of chopping up ships and grinding them away, but it is still very satisfying fracturing and then disintegrating for two reasons, personally. Number one, it creates that full, complete game loop of salvaging a ship in its entirety and completely removing it from the persistent database. And secondly, kind of leading on from that, it helps to clean up the servers, removing ships that are left by players who have just respawned or reclaimed their ships, leaving these ones behind forever. Now, I have had some pretty incredible moments already in 322 revolving around salvaging, one of which was at this Astor's clearing settlement. And while I was exploring the location on foot, a player came in to take out a couple of NPC bounties who were flying overhead. And seeing this Reliant, which was the player, take out these ships was pretty exciting, especially while I was amongst the villagers. One of the ships exploded flying into the ground just beyond the forest, while another one, being a Talon, got soft deathed within the forest a few yards away from the settlement. So I firstly went off on foot, exploring and looking around and seeing this ship amongst the trees. And then I eventually got into my vulture, used the tractor beam to pull out the ship from the trees and a lot of its parts, placing it into a clearing and then scraping the hulls, stripping the weapons and then disintegrating it. The whole process was so much fun, especially within that environment and really shows the scale of how all of these game mechanics are starting to tie together. Now, looking to the future, we will see structural salvage become physicalized, chopping off pieces of ships 
and grinding them up will happen once the Maelstrom physical damage system comes in. But in the meantime, I am really enjoying just flying around from location to location looking for potential salvage. And as I like to say, a true salvager does not need to pay for salvage. I'm kidding, you can do it however you please. Now next we have personal cargo containers. And if I'm completely honest, at first I was slightly disappointed when I learned that these containers were not actually physically openable as the description and image would kind of lead you to believe. However, a developer did say on Spectrum that that is the plan later down the line where we will be able to open them up, physically walk inside them and place items in them and then close them again. But for now, they are just like any other loot box. However, for 322, these are in standard cargo unit boxes ranging in sizes from 1, 2, 4 and 8 SEU. And players can purchase these boxes from cargo decks and use them to store their items. Now, this has been a much needed feature for quite a while. So I am certainly grateful that we can buy them. We can use them irrespective of whether we can physically open them and walk inside as this allows scavengers like myself to really go from place to place, looting the hell out of the location and then selling those bits on or keeping them for myself. So great for hitting up bunkers or settlements or anywhere where there is potential loot, really. They are a very convenient addition that will become more and more necessary as the game develops and we start to see player homes and hangars come along. Not to mention when we start getting out of the current habit of continually reclaiming our ships through either bugs, crashes or just general laziness, having a way of transporting our personal goods en masse is going to be very helpful. So a major quality of life addition that already has a huge impact on how I play Star Citizen and I am looking forward to seeing them evolve into actual physical boxes. Now, the remaining features that I consider to be the best are mostly polishing, optimizations, and quality of life improvements. I am purposely leaving out the new hair update, as although it is great to see a new addition to help add more detail and style to our characters, I am more interested in the full character customizer, which, as we know, is set to come around the first half of next year. But in terms of other updates that I consider to be great for Alpha 322, we firstly have a lot more polish and balance for the FPS weapons, in regards to their recoil, their overall stats and balancing, fire rates and functions, I suppose. Uh, they have also done quite a few things to increase the time to kill, which essentially means players and NPCs can take a bit more damage, but they sustain injuries more often. And I personally do like the idea of injuries being a more likely occurrence, but as it feels right now that from what I have experienced, the time to kill does feel a little bit too high as characters seem to be just bullet sponges. Unless this is all going to tie into the armor system, we will have to wait and see. But I personally hope that as it stands right now, they dial it back slightly. Now, overall, it is great to see the FPS side of Star Citizen receive a lot of attention. And as we go into 2024, we will certainly see a lot more to bring the FPS to that AAA standard. Now, to finish with, there has been a lot of other smaller updates and balances to things like mining, tracked beams, the AI on foot, gravlev vehicles, prices for ships and armors as part of the ongoing economy updates. But one thing that I have found with 322 is just how much more stable and smoother it has been to play from the other patches. Now, early on for 322's testing, the new settlements started out as a bit of a frame rate pit of doom with my FPS literally plummeting to about 0.4 for a long duration. And after a couple of patches to optimize this, I am seeing great frame rates as I travel down to these locations and basically anywhere in the verse for that matter. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're not amazing frame rates, but they are playable. And after playing on the tech preview channel with the separated replication layer, I am very hopeful that once that does come to the live servers, there will be another boost in performance and not just server stability. Now, when it comes to the end of year patch, there is always a worry that it is going to be a complete buggy performance dropping mess for the holidays, leaving little desire to jump in. But Alpha 322, in my opinion, from what I have played, is in great shape. And I am always feeling that want to play right now, which is a good sign. But unfortunately, time just doesn't allow it. But those are my favorite features and changes to Alpha 322. I highly suggest jumping in and giving it a go if you have the time to check it out. Don't forget, we also have a Drake Cutter Rambler LTI game package that we are giving away. This was courtesy of Cloud Imperium, so a big thank you to them. 
All you have to do to win is firstly be a subscriber to my YouTube channel and then comment on any of my videos that I release between the dates of the 18th and 24th of December, letting me know what you love most about Alpha 322. Also, for those of you who are interested, the Toby Eye Tracker 5 is currently on a 20% off sale right now until the 2nd of January, I believe. I cannot recommend this product enough for how it just immerses you into the game, allowing not just for your head to be tracked, but your eyes as well. It is a great time to pick this device up if you are looking for one, so be sure to follow the link in the description. And for every item purchased using that link, I do receive a kickback, so it is very much appreciated, and thank you in advance. But with that said, if you do enjoy my videos, please do consider subscribing. We are making a good push to that 60,000 subscriber mark, so thank you very much. Also, come and hang out over at twitch.tv forward slash supermacbrother. We are getting back to the four-hour streams rather than the three-hour streams, which I had to drop it to since my daughter was born. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, although not this Monday for obvious reasons. And we're just testing it between 1 and 5 p.m. GMT and 2 and 6 p.m. GMT to see what sits best. You are all more than welcome. The link is in the description below. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind, does the channel a big favor, and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.